saw a film crew in a street and it wasn't so much because of the cameras and that that was interesting but there was about 19 girls filming and I thought well oh, that looks interesting so it wasn't even a genuine love of movies really that got me in there and I, I just like a lot of people when there's a camera people stand around watching and I went over to um, I got talking to this guy who was on the crew and uh, um, <laughs> and I was just about to go off and he said but we have got some volunteers jobs going in the studio we've just had some lottery money you look like a strong lad come and do some building work put some lighting rigs up and so weirdly I kind of entered it completely by chance and um, and I, this guy who uh, took me in and gave me this job as a volunteer started lending me cameras it snowballed and after four or five of them I think the fourth or fifth one I made was a film called Where's the Money Ronnie and uh, I got a few of my mates were back from college I put them in it and I showed him that one and he said that one's actually really good you should send it for some competitions and uh I think about a month after I sent it, Stephen Woolley, the very sort of well-established and famous British film producer, rang me from um, New York while he was making Michael Collins with Liam Neeson and said, that short film is amazing and have you ever thought about making a feature? So six months from you know, being chucked out of, uh, of college, I'd sort of <laughs> stumbled across and then obviously embraced filmmaking. I was location manager, I came out of... At university and managed to get a job on a film called Brassed Off um, in 95. What was really good was that I used to sit with directors, I'd pick them up from a station, drive them around locations really early on. So you're often the first person like, on the job because you're trying to scout things. And I just picked up, it was like a ta being a taxi driver, I used to just listen to them on the mobile phones thinking, oh that's interesting. And arguing, often arguing with producers and I saw a few films that were really well produced and a few that were really badly produced, if you know what I mean. That in terms of the, the original idea got completely um, ruined by a committee of producers. I thought, oh, this is not, you know, so it really gave me a passion to sort of give it a go. Uh, film wise, for me, I think Mean Streets uh, influenced me the most. I, I became quite obsessed with it, really, because I, I, I kind of kept watching it, and although I know he'd made you know, what was deemed to be bigger, grander, better films, there was something about that one that made me feel like I could I could do it. I watched a film called Bicycle Thief, which an Italian neo-realist film, about a guy who saves up for a bike to get his job, and then somebody nicks it, and it was just, it was one of the most amazing. It was the first black and white film that wasn't Laurel and Hardy, or Howard Lloyd that I'd seen, and <laughs> it was a completely, there was no action in it, it was just beautiful, and it's the first subtitle film I ever watched. And that changed everything for me. So it was just a stunning, um, stunning film. Really good. When I was a kid, and you know, when I wanted to, you know, first start making films, it was re you know, really, it was pr I was priced out of the market. I couldn't get hold of the equipment to, you know, to even make very basic stuff. It wasn't available at all. So now, with the advent of technology you're in a position where you can, and you, you, know, you only have to look on Vimeo and YouTube, but what people are producing on cameras like this, uh, the quality, um, but, one, you know, but one thing that doesn't happen is it doesn't make you a great storyteller. So you've maybe now, you've got, the technology's caught up and is affordable, um, but it doesn't necessarily, you know, I think great storytelling will always still stand out. My advice would be make something close to home, something you believe in, something you care about, I think probably echoing what Shane just said, really. And, and in terms of, you know, as a producer, I get sent ideas from first time filmmakers, and it's got like a sort of half hour car chase in it. And <laughs> you think, you know, just, you know, and you're thinking this is just impossible. So, and also one of the things about film, there's a lot of people who wait two, three, four years, they're waiting for the funding. And actually, what, what I think, what, I think it's about practice, and some people should just. Even you know, an artist will, who's doing life drawing will spend like months and months getting it right and getting the form right. There's a lot of filmmakers just have the idea in the head and then just wait, do what, and then turn up and want great. But actually, just get out there and practice and practice storytelling. And I think it's one of those things that I think you just build up, like anything, whether it's playing football or whatever. The more practice you do, I think, the better you get. Yeah. 